Hello, thank you for joining today's webinar. Um, we're gonna just go through a couple of quick housekeeping bits and get started because we have a lot to cover. Um, today's topic is Google Ads for Beginners. This is a very, very basic class. We're trying to go and give you some introductory information. So if you've never executed a Google Ads or Google AdWords campaign in the past, this is your opportunity to try to do one for your small business. So the assumption here is you have no experience whatsoever. You've always been curious or interested in running a Google Ads campaign. You might've heard it was hard or people spend money and lose money very quickly. My role here today is to try to give you some quick introductory information. Um, it is a lot to talk about, so it's very difficult to get through in one hour, uh, but we're going to make our best steps to do that. So again, we're going to be very focused, going to give you basics, and we're trying to gonna push you along. So hopefully you can go and take this information and do something useful with it. Um, so who am I? My name is Roland Reinhardt. I'm a digital marketing consultant. I have 30 plus year career in marketing and advertising, and I've spent a large portion of that focused on the digital side, digital marketing. So I can talk to many, many topics related to websites and search optimization, search advertising, email marketing, social media, video creation, et cetera. But my role here today is try to give you information specifically about Google ads. Um, I am a small business owner for the past 12 years, so I know what it's like to sort of put, wear many hats. I've also been a business counselor and instructor with the New Jersey Small Business Development Center for the past 11 years. And the NJSBDC is an excellent source for you to consider using if you haven't already. Um, they provide no cost business counseling to people who are looking for help or trying to grow their business. Um, they offer a lot of training classes, both uh, sometimes no cost like this one, sometimes fee based, which are a little more robust. But um, it's very important that if you need help, reach out and ask for it. I know many people on this webinar today were invited through one of the SBDC offices, either through Brookdale Community College, which covers Monmouth and Ocean Counties in New Jersey, or Rowan Valley Community College, um, which covers Somerset County and Huntington County. Um, if you know them, please reach out to them, ask for assistance. Uh, they can talk to you, or they can match you up with subject matter experts on many different topics. Um, so for, again, like I focus on digital marketing topics. So afterwards, if you wanna go and schedule one-on-one -on -one business counseling with me, so we're sort of like if you set up a campaign and you wanted to have somebody review it objectively, I be happy to do that, but you have to raise your hand and ask. You go to either the Monmouth Ocean Small Business Development Center website, request business counseling through there, or call them and request it, or you can go to the uh, Ryan Valley Community College business uh, website, go and request counseling through there or call them, but you have to ask for help. That's the key thing here. So if you want help, ask for help, and then they'll match you up with people like myself who can provide that no cost business counseling for you. So take advantage of it. And if you know somebody who's starting a business or struggling to grow it, please tell a friend. So what do we need to do today? Take notes because I'm gonna go through this and I'm gonna go through it quickly. And it's always a good idea to write things down because it helps you with your memory retention and makes you start thinking about different things you might not have thought about before. In order to run a Google Ads campaign, you have to drive people to a website. If you don't have a website, then there's no point of having a Google Ads campaign. So you should have a good functioning website first, one that's mobile responsive, one that's well thought out, has a good user experience, loads quickly, um, clear marketing, copy and clear call to action. And you have to have some positive open-mindedness because what I'm teaching you today may go against things that you thought. Um, the whole point is you need to continuously educate yourself and inform yourself because there's lots of different ways of doing things. There's good ways and there's ineffective ways and there's everything in between. So I'm gonna to try to give you good information based on my many years of, of experience and hopefully you can do something. Just keep in mind that Things we talk about today, there are no guarantees. I can't promise that just because I gave you information, if you implement it and you don't implement it the way I recommend, or if you implement it in some other way with some other variable that you may not achieve whatever success you're hoping for. There are no guarantees in any of this. I'm just providing information and you have to decide what to do with it. And you should supplement that with information that you gather from other sources. So please let this just be part of your information gathering journey and you should continue to learn. So what you're gonna learn today is in a short amount of time is a few simple repeatable steps. And our purpose here is to have an ad, specifically a text ad for your business to appear at the top of the search results on Google. That is a very effective way because if somebody is searching for something, they're typing some keyword phrase, they're gonna get results. There's an ad at the top, they click that ad, they get to your website. And if you do things well, then you're gonna get clicks and you're gonna get people on your website and they're gonna hopefully be a lead generation uh, function for you. Um, so if you can follow these steps, the way I'm recommending, you probably will set yourself up for success. But again, it's only the very, very beginning because there's many different things that you could be doing that to go and advance yourself and have more success over the, over time. So what we're not gonna focus on today is there are many different 
aspects to Google Ads. I mean, at the, so at the minimum, we're going to talk about is search ads, the ads that appear as text ads at the top of a search result. We're not going to talk about shopping ads. We're not talking about read marketing. We're not talking about YouTube. We're not talking about display ads, which are contextual ads that appear in the bodies of articles or blog posts. We're not talking about audiences. It's just simply too much. We will never get through it. And again, that's not basics. So I'm going to focus on just basic stuff. We're not talking about social media. And we can't get into the weeds of talking about how to build a website or register a domain name because those you should have a website already if you intend to run a Google Ads campaign. It's a Google first world, right? Google dominates 90% of the search market in the US. Um, people go to Google by default uh, to go and search for something, solve a problem, solve a pain, get a solution provider, figure out how to do it yourself, you know, whatever that is. They're going to go to Google, whether it's a la desktop, laptop, tablet, smartphone, and they're going to type some phrase. It could be a simple keyword phrase. It could be a statement. It could be a question. It could have geographic information in it, like the words, you know, like tax uh, accountant near me or in 08807 or Middletown, New Jersey. It could be, have any number of things in there because over 20 years, we've been all taught gradually to go and try to write more specific things so we get better results. So search engine ads, um, you know, are what usually appear at the very, very top of a search result page. We have this linear single column usually of search results. It's very long, but it's broken out into different parts of the page. At the very top of the page, Google places maybe three to four text ads. And those ads are um, run by any business that wants to go and like have an ad that appears at the top. So it's nice. You're not, um, you may be competing against big brands or you might be competing against your you know, local competition, but you have an opportunity to elbow your way onto the page by running an ad at the top here. And that's using the Google Ads platform. Google Ads, what used to be called Google AdWords. Um, that allows you to sort of like uh, have an ad appear at the top of the page. It's triggered based on a set of criteria, like usually a keyword phrase, maybe a geographic location, maybe some other criteria. But that helps to define why you might have an ad appear at the top of the search result. It's going to be based on criteria, and it's going to be based on some competition that might also be running at the same time. A little bit further down the page, you see local business listings what Google used to call uh, Google Places, and then they call it Google Plus Local, now they call it Google My Business. These are free local business listings people can set up, um, and typically they're meant for a business that does transaction in person. So if you went to google.com slash business, you created a free account, answered all the questions, got verified, you could have a link that appears here below a little map with some thumbtacks of other local businesses. So again, you know, Google encourages, this is for somewhere where people go physically. They don't want you, if you're a work at home scenario, they don't necessarily want you to be creating local business listings here. But if you do have a office and you meet people in an office or a store or location, you could go and have, potentially appear here. Further down the page, you ha might have, you know, questions or knowledge graph, knowledge box information, but uh, there's the organic section, organic links, and this is where, if you ever heard the phrase SEO, search engine optimization, you know, we do things to try to improve the odds of pages of a website appearing in the search results for free. That's where we call organic search, and that's where, you know, the tactics that we use to try to get in position on the page, that's called SEO typically. And that's that blue section down here. But the thing you have to realize is look how far down the page that all of the SEO efforts are. So if you're spending time, your labor, trying to go and do SEO, you're getting links further down the page. If you qualified for a Google My Business listing, maybe you got a free link somewhere higher up the page. But it's the ads that are really going to be at the very, very top. And then some of them uh, additional placements might appear at the very bottom of the page. But the ads at the top are what going to get eyeballs first when somebody's doing a search because Google's going to try to match up these search results based on what the user was searching on at that moment. So higher up the page obviously helps to get clicks. And you also have to think about this in terms of like, um, you know, what is actually happening here, the prospect who's going to find your website. You know, and they're going to start with something. They're doing some search from some device. It could be a mobile device, could be a, a desktop or a laptop. They found a link. They're clicking on it whether that link is an ad or a, or a natural link, they're clicking on that and they're arriving on a page of your website. It's not always the home page. It could be a more specific page of your website that continues, you know, set, uh, based on whatever, you know, the link that was clicked on. There's a landing page in turn, if people like what they see there and if you're do it well, if it's competently written, if it's persuasive, if it has enough information, maybe a person might, uh, you know, read a testimonials page to confirm that you do this well for other people. Maybe they'll read your about page and your bio to see that you have cre credentials um, and, uh, you know, the history of being able to do it well, being qualified to do it. Then once they sort of 
assumed that information, they're going to say, okay, I'm going to go and contact you or I'm going to go and hit the back button. If they liked everything and they want to contact you, they're going to do something like, right, fill out the contact forms, successfully submit it, get to a thank you page, or they're going to click to call, or maybe they're, they're doing something else like, you know, maybe they're uh, uh, signing up to add to their email newsletter or signing up for a webinar that you're giving, whatever it is. But, you know, you're starting with they don't know you. They clicked on a link. They arrived on your website. You have just precious seconds and maybe just a, a one or two minutes to convince them to go and hire, uh, to, to be, have a conversation with you, to hire you. And if you did that successfully, they will connect with you somehow so you can take it to the next step. So, you know, what is Google Ads and the text campaign that we're going to set up? You know, and Google's definition is it's an online advertising program. You can create ads to reach people exactly when they're interested in the products or services that you offer. And that sounds great, right? Um, but you have to do it in a way that's going to make sense, that you're not wasting money, that it's going to be targeted well, um, and that you're going to get the right type of potential prospects to your website. You don't want to just send anybody to your website because it costs a lot of money and won't necessarily be relevant. We want to try to refine it as much as possible. So the pros to this is, yeah, it's easy to get started. Anybody can create an account for free. It doesn't get activated until you provide a credit card. So then you're going to start paying. Um, you have a variety of targeting options to go and try to get your ads to appear in front of you know, the ideal type of prospect. You can quickly turn things off if you need to, you know, go, go away for a vacation or whatever. And if you're coming back on, turn things back on right away. So, and it can also be a good way to generate leads rather quickly. But the whole thing is, you know, you don't want to set it and forget it. It's something you should be paying attention to. You know, initially when you started, you're going to be checking it every couple of days. Then you might be checking it every week or so. Um, but you have to pay quickly and, you know, you a good steward of the account and you're well and make setting it up for you know improvements over time um, if you're not careful you can certainly go and lose money and that's where people who've tried Google Ads in the past and then they just complain and badmouth it they say that it didn't work but they don't explain why or what they did and what they didn't do in order to make it potentially work harder for them. So that's what I'm going to try to do today is just give you a couple of quick tips. Get yourself started and make sure you put in some safeguards and uh, in place so you don't have a bad experience. So to get started, you need to decide, you know, what exactly are you advertising? You know, services are a lot easier, especially for a text ad. So, you know, if you're an accountant, if you're a physical therapist, if you're, you know, clinical nutritionist, if you're a landscaper, whatever, these are typically service-based businesses. And it's a really good example of what you could put in the search results. And that are going to be searched on by some specific keyword phrase and a link appears and somebody clicks on. And you have to have a, a website that's ready for it. If you do not have a website, do not run a Google ad campaign. It really doesn't make any sense that you don't send them to a Facebook business page or a LinkedIn business page. You send them to a website that you control. That's the smart thing to do. Otherwise, it's going to be a waste of money and a bad experience for everybody. You need to choose a few keyword phrases that are appropriate for the service you're offering. So you can advertise as many services that are appropriate for your business. If you're an accountant, you might have like, you know, we do tax return preparation, we do tax audit representation, maybe we do some estate planning, maybe we do some, some other things. So you create different pages of your website that talk about those different specific things, and then you choose keyword phrases that are respective to that. So you keep everything very, very specific. I'll show you an example in a moment. You also have to write some text that appears in your ads because an ad has words, right? It has a title, has some descriptive text. Um, that's what's going to convince someone to click on that ad to go to your website. So if you don't write something that seems interesting or inviting or has an incentive, then people are not going to necessarily go through. So your website structure should be something that, you know, is um, going to work harder for you. In the old days, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, websites were simple, right? Home services about us, contact us. Four pages, nothing else. And that services page had like 15, 20 bullet points on it of all the things that, that you offer. That is completely useless these days in terms of getting found in the search results because there are too many tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of competitors already that exist. And you got billions of pages that are being indexed in the search results. And, you know, why should your simple little website with four pages ever be shown in the search results. Um, that's where if you're doing some SEO, you're going to go and probably build a structure that's more like what I'm showing on the screen, where you actually go and have different unique pages for different topics. And this helps you when you're doing your planning for 
running a Google Ads campaign because if I'm going to do something about tax return preparation, I'm going to run an ad that talks about tax, tax return preparation. It's going to be triggered when somebody types the keyword phrase for tax return preparation. I want them to come to a landing page that's all about tax return preparation. I don't want to send them to a services page with 15 bullet points that you know, tax return preparation is the 13th one down the list, that does not impress the prospect. And they're probably gonna go and click the back button and go somewhere else. So this is where you wanna make sure your end-to-end -end user experience makes sense. Person types something into, into search, they got a link that talks about um, what the person was searching for, they click through it and they arrive on a page that's specifically about that. That's a good user experience and you're setting yourself up for a be better success when you're running a Google Ads campaign. So what kind of keyword phrases should your ideal customer use when they're searching Google? Um, you have to remember that not everybody is a prospect. Some people want to just sort of do it yourself. So you have to think about those phrases a little bit. You know, maybe a person is looking for do-it-yourself help to go and do their tax return. Maybe they're do-it-yourself for audit representation. <laughs> uh, maybe they're do-it-yourself that they want to learn how to take a CPA exam or they're searching for CPA jobs, accountant jobs, bookkeeper jobs. You don't necessarily want your ads to always appear in those type of searches because that's not the ideal type of customer you want, right? Because those are people who are looking more selfishly for themselves, but they're not actually having any kind of intent to hire you. So you want to think about the keyword phrases people are typing to find a service provider. You know, so if I'm looking for, if somebody's typing for a small business accountant or a small business bookkeeper or a bookkeeper for rest, that likely that person is looking for a service provider. So choose words like that that you're going to use in your campaign. You don't take simple words like accountant because that's way too broad. It's not specific at all. Um, so I'll show you that in a moment. But you know you have to sort of get in this mindset of phrases are going to matter because that's what people are putting, the shoe, putting yourself in the shoes of your prospect to understand how they're thinking, what phrases they're going to type in to solve their problem. So you can hopefully be there with a solution. So we have to prepare these ads. Um, the ads are very simple in nature. You know, they are text. You have a title, you have a, li a link that it's going to go through, a display link, if you will. You're going to have like a description that appears with it. And if you're viewing it on a desktop, it's going to be more about wider and, and a little bit larger and easier to read. If it's being shown on a mobile device, it's a lot more compressed and shorter. Um, when you are in the Google Ads platform and setting up your campaign for the first time, it will go and walk you specifically through what you need to fill in. And there'll be little indicators, like if you mouse over the question mark, you know, these are contextual help indicators that will answer the question. If you're not sure what a final URL is, if you just mouse over this little question mark, it'll actually have a little tooltip that appears and explains what is the final URL. It's actually the destination page that you're, or landing page for your website that you're sending somebody to. If you click and mouse over, you know, this question mark is going to explain what headline one is versus headline two uh, versus, you know, description one, description two. Each one of these also has a maximum number of characters that you can input. So, you know, each part of a headline, and this allows like up to three parts of a headline, has a character count restriction. So you're going to be able to type up until that certain amount and then it stops. So you want to think carefully about what are you going to put in here and doing a little bit of work ahead of time helps you because if you can write that out all out in advance before you start trying to copy pasting it into the ad platform, you'll just have a better experience and it won't be as confusing. Um, let's see what else. Your ads, you want your text to be clear. And I think one of the best things to do is always sort of like look at other competitors for inspiration. So if you went to Google and you searched for a phrase that you think is going to be relevant to your business, you want to see what other competitors come up when, when that is, you know, the ads that get triggered for that and see what language they're using. So just to get some inspiration, I'm not saying to click on their ads, I'm saying to go on and just, you know, take a look and see what shows up in the search results. And that way you have an idea of like how to write because if you're not a marketing person, you're not a copywriter, and you really don't have any good experience with that, you know, this is what you're going to have to, you know, become a little bit better at. And, you know, fortunately, we're talking about small amounts of text here. So usually you can be pretty creative with a short amount of text. Um, t finding a title that's going to be, you know, pique somebody's interest, you know, in your description, including benefits. Because remember, pe people like features, but they purchase based on the benefit. The benefit is, I'm going to save time. I'm going to save money. I'm going to get rid of this problem quickly. You know, features are nice because those are all just the extra things that make you feel like there's value to what you're choosing. But the benefits are ultimately what, what encourages someone to purchase. Having, you know, a clear offer, 
you know, you don't just send them to some page and it's going to be a whole bunch of vague information on that page. You want to make sure that you're defining, you know, what it is up front. Like if you're offering free consultations and put that language in the description or the title and make sure on the landing page when somebody's clicking through, they're going to see what um, the description, I mean, you know, what that call to action is. Uh, avoid using uh, abbreviations because abbreviations and all caps and a lot of excessive punctuation, these are things that sort of trigger your ads to, to get paused and not shown at all uh, because there's a lot of automation in this tool that um, is going to decide, well, you know, if you put three exclamation points in a, after a word, right off the bat, that's not allowed because it looks stupid. Um, if you write like all your titles are screaming in uppercase, it's gonna look stupid. So there's automated automations there that are gonna prevent you from trying to run an ad when you do something like that. So write like an adult, spell your words out, use punctuation that makes sense, don't be excessive, don't try to be gimmicky, uh, and then you'll have a better chance of success. And again, if you sort of look at other examples of live ads, you'll probably get a good idea. And then also, you know, Google has guidelines out there. You can easily go and do a Google search, you know, acceptable Google ads or Google ad guidelines. You can easily go and find all sorts of information about what's acceptable, what's not type of topics that you're allowed to run. Like you're not allowed to run ads promoting, you know, um, CBD and marijuana or prescription marijuana. And there's a lot of pharmacy stuff that's not, not permitted, um, you know, uh, things related to guns and ammunition and uh, fireworks and explosives, um, vaping. So there's a lot of categories that are not permitted. So before you even spend the time, like going trying to set up a Google ads campaign, you probably should go and look and find out, is there a policy that will prevent you from running a campaign in a category that's questionable, like gambling, or pharmacy stuff or whatever. So with that said, we're about 1227. I'm going to punch through, taking you through some steps specifically how you create your first campaign in Google. And then we'll open it up to questions at the end. And thanks, I see some people are speaking to submit things in the chat window for questions, so good. Um, where do we start? Assuming you've never done anything, you go to ads.google.com and you're going to follow the steps to, you know, to create your account. You, know, you need a Gmail account, a free Gmail account if you don't already have one, just create one. And that way you can sort of get into this Google Ads campaign. Just a word of caution, make sure you're getting into sort of the full featured version of Google Ads because there's also something old called Google Ads Express or Google, Google AdWords Express. It's a really poor performing tool and I do not recommend it. So if you see anything about Express, don't accept that one. You want the full featured proper one because that has all the controls that you can customize that you want and you'll have a better experience. So Google ads, um, follow whatever steps they say to, you know, in terms of they might want to have some wizard that type takes you through of like, okay, let's go and get you started. Here's what you should do. Um, that helps, you know, just follow the steps. They're trying to guide you to make you a little bit successful. You don't go live until you're actually ready, you're happy, and you put in a credit card. So don't worry, you don't have to put in a credit card until you're absolutely done setting up your campaign, making sure that you are ready to go. Oops, sorry. So let me uh, just change what I'm showing. Here we go. So once you're in to Google Ads, the dashboard's gonna look something like this. It's a little sparse, but there's also a lot of stuff in here that's a little confusing. I'm using an account that I use on a regular basis just for demonstrations so that you're not gonna see that wizard we were, I was just alluding to and it says here that your campaign is canceled. Don't worry, that's just because of the nature of the account I'm using for demonstration purposes. It's nothing important here. Um, but you, know, you will notice that when you come back into your accounts over time, you will see messages that prompt you. you know, sometimes if there's some big glaring error, you'll see a big red message running across the top of giving a suggestion of how to fix it. Sometimes you see like a little notification thing where it says there's something that has to be fixed and you can go ahead and see what that is and fix it. Um, so it's all there and ready for you. Basically what you're looking at here is, you know, running across the top, you have some functionality, um, reports, tools, notifications, et cetera. If you have to do things related to your, your account, like your billing information and account settings, you can do that all up in here. Running down the left-hand side is where you manage the actual campaigns you're setting up. So you have a campaign as sort of a very high level organization of something. So your first campaign is gonna be whatever you want. You can call it search campaign, you can call it summer 2020. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's just a way of like labeling it for something that's gonna help you organize your thoughts. And then down the road, if you wanted a you know, winter campaign, you can go and create a whole separate one, a whole separate ads in there um, to manage it differently. It's all up to you how you do this. But 
you're going to start with some campaign originally. That's probably going to be search. And we need to create something in there. So let's go ahead and start setting up a new campaign for the first time. It's going to give you some suggestions here. Well, what are you trying to accomplish, right? Sales, leads, website traffic. Ideally, in most of the scenarios I work in, a business wants leads, right? So again, a service provider, physical therapist, the accountant, the bookkeeper, the nutritionist, um, landscaper, painter, house painter, whatever that is, you want leads, right? Because they're not customers yet. You want people to discover you, come to your website, read about you, and then fill out, you know, request for appointment for, request for more information, contact us, whatever it is. So it's a lead that you're starting with. So I click on that, scroll down a little bit. Now it's saying what kind of search campaign type? There's a lot of different ones. We are only going to talk about this first one, search, because this is the way that you're going to get an ad to appear at the top of the search results, search. Um, it's a text ad that appears at the top. We're not doing display or shopping or YouTube videos or audience remarketing, anything like that, because that's just too much for today. So search is what we're doing. And that's where you can get that working well, then you can go and experiment with other types of campaign uh, campaigns. So I'm going to click continue. Uh, let's see, what does it say here? So search type, leads, you know, that's what we talked about. Campaign name, I'll call this anything I want. You know, I call it, uh, uh, let me see, summer 2020, if I want to do that, doesn't matter. It could be anything. It could be a search only. How about that? Search only. Um, here it says networks. What do you want to do? Include search partners? Yes, because that actually means more, uh, not just when people are on Google, but when people are on a website that use Google as a search engine, then you'll, your ads could appear in those results. So yes, I do want to check there. Display network, no, I do not want that. And I uncheck that. And the reason is, these are a different type of ad that's going to appear in different scenarios that's not based on search results. It's going to be like the contextual ads where an ad is appearing on some article about you know bicycles or whatever. Um, I don't want that. I want to specifically run and have my ads appear in the search results triggered on a specific keyword phrase. So I'm just going to go and focus on the search network with search partners and uncheck the display network part. Um, you'll also notice as you're going down, you know, you can go and roll things up, you know, clicking on these little triangles to reveal more settings, hide settings. So there's things you can do in here, but right now, you know, they, by default, they close up the things where you don't really have to make a decision. Targeting. So this is important. Right off the bat, they're going to say, like, we'll show your ads across the entire United States. That may not be right for you, right? Because you are if you're a local business and you're just focused on a 20 mile radius or whatever, well, you don't want to be showing ads across the United States because it's completely irrelevant. Um, so let's go and maybe refine that a little bit. So we can go and say, enter another location. Maybe I'm just going to say um, Somerset County, New Jersey as a target. Maybe I'll add another one. I'll say Monmouth County, New Jersey. We could also go and do something like if you wanted to go and uh, maybe just show a town like me, or you wanted to do a radius. So if I wanted to say, like, I want to do like a, uh, like 15 mile radius of um, know, Princeton, New Jersey. I could go and be very, very specific like that. Or I could go and spe uh, specify towns. I could say Hillsborough, Princeton, Trenton, uh, Cranberry, Jamesburg, um, whatever you want, you can go and refine that. So it's up to you. So if it's a service provider that has to do a lot of road travel, you probably want to sort of look at, well, what are the ways, uh, you know, businesses that are high household incomes that are along the corridors that you or your crews would be traveling, right? If, it, if the travel time really doesn't matter, because you're probably going to meet the person once, and then everything else is going to be working on offline, then it probably doesn't matter, right? You could probably go and do more radius search than more specific talents. It's up to you to decide how you want to do this. Base it on the entire state or specific counties or specific towns or radius. Doesn't matter, it's up to you. Um, by default, this is always going to assume your English audiences. We're not dealing with that because that's a much more complicated thing and you really have to spend time setting up your website to, to do that properly. Budget and bidding. So here's what you have to decide. It's go Google Ads costs you money when somebody clicks on your ad. So when you go live, it doesn't cost you anything. As soon as somebody clicks on an ad, it's gonna cost you something. And the cost per click can vary dramatically. It could be 50 cents a click, it could be $2.50 a click, it could be $10 a click. It all depends on the keyword phrase, how much competition is, what's the historical data on that. So you really have to be mindful that in order to prevent something from running out of control, you wanna put some stopgap in place. And if you don't have much budget because you're experimenting, 
thing. You have to put some limitations in place too. But until you run a campaign for a while, you're not going to have any good data coming back to know, is this thing working? So usually I would say, you know, start by making like a daily budget of say $15 a day, at least for the very beginning, because you, this is early, you need to get some learnings, you need to get some results back so you can decide how you want to do things. Then you can always reduce the cost a little bit less, or you can increase it more if you're seeing some success. Or if you wanted to spread this out over a month, then it's like, okay, well, if I have 30 days in a month, let's say I have a $300 budget, that's the most I can spend this month, 300 divided by 30, that's 10. So my daily average spend, I would put 10, right? If you wanted to do something like that. But you got to put something here. Don't put $2 because that's just stupid and you won't get any results. You'll have no useful information. You got to spend a little bit up front to sort of start getting some feedback to figure out how is this working. Your bidding type, you know, they're going to ask, well, what do you want to do? Well, there's actually a lot of options, but a lot of them aren't unlocked until you've actually had a campaign up and running, spending money, getting impressions, getting clicks, getting conversions. So until you have a lot of that stuff, actually data coming back, you won't have any results that will be meaningful. So for now, just assume clicks. You want to focus on getting clicks. Do you want to set a maximum cost per click limit? Yeah, so as I mentioned, cost per click can be very expensive. Like I said, it could be, you know, 75 cents a click, could be $3 a click, could be $18 a click. There are categories that are very, very expensive, like anything in financial service, real estate, healthcare, attorneys. Um, those are categories where the cost per click is really high very fast. So maybe if you just want to put a, something as a, a prevention of it for going out of control, you could say, okay, well, you know what? I don't want to spend any more than $5 per click. So that is supposed to sort of enforce that in theory, if I'm spending no more than $15 a day, and no more than $5 a click, I should be able to get at least three people clicking on my campaign that day before it shuts down for the rest of the day. Because as soon as you've reached you know, your budget or how much Google is going to spend on your, uh, on your behalf during that day, as soon as you reach that, that cap, the campaign stops and then the next day it'll resume because it's, you're, you've put limitations in here so it doesn't spend too much. Uh, what else? So then there's other options down here. Again, a lot of these things aren't really relevant just yet. You need to sort of get your campaign up and running before that. Um, there are other things called ad extensions. We just don't have the time to go through this, but these are excellent things to do, that, uh, ways to add additional information around your ads. So like site link extensions, these are like additional links to different pages of your site that you can add in addition to the one main link for your, your call out extensions or similar that. They're like, you know, three or four additional bits of words that appear, but they're not clickable. They're just things like, you know, sh uh, free shipping and handling, open 24 uh, seven, satisfaction guaranteed, you know, just very simple, short little statements. And you have three or four of call out extensions along with your ad or three or four site link extensions with your ad. If you have a physical location, people are going to go to, you can promote that as well by adding a location extension. And basically you're tying this into your existing Google My Business account and it'll pull the data from there to display call extensions if you want to show a phone number with your ads. So if somebody's looking at an ad on a smartphone, there's a click to call option, they can click and immediately sort of like, you know, you put their click to call. Um, so those are great things to take advantage of. You can explore those on your own time and set up what's appropriate for you. So uh, let me just give it a different name. Okay, so uh, click save. So these pages tend to be long and scrolling. Just make sure you go down and then find, you know, when you're ready to move on, you click the save button. And you can see this sort of little progress indicator going across the top here. Uh, your ad group name. So within a campaign, you can have multiple ad groups. Ad groups are probably best aligned against different services. And then within those services or ad groups, you're gonna have a handful of keyword phrases and then a handful of ads to be testing against each other in that. And then you can create a whole other ad group for a different service and a third ad group for yet a different service. And that way you sort of manage these things directly. You don't want to just create one campaign with one ad group and have like 100 keywords all going to one ad because it doesn't make sense. You're not, it's a bad experience. You're going to be spending a lot more money and you're going to have much poorer results because you're not going to get people who are looking for something specific. You're letting them down when you're doing something like that. Really the way to be successful in Google Ads is create different distinct services based on different keyword phrases for different intent. We're gonna create a first ad group in there. I'm gonna call it, uh, let's see, let's, let's say tax audit representation. So I'm gonna be very, very specific about this. Um, 
I'm just uh, bear with me for, for time. I'm going to copy paste out of something I have off to the side here. Um, what keywords do I want to use for this? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think I'm going to do like tax audit accountants, tax audit representation, and you're putting each keyword phrase on a line by itself. But there's something important, a little advanced tip here to help you be more successful. You don't just type these phrases, the keyword phrases you're hoping that a human is typing into the search engine. You don't just put them in blank like this. You actually want to do something where we're call, putting sort of this double quotation mark around it. Match type, and you see this very little, uh, little sketchy explanation right here. And if you click learn more, it'll give you a lot more detail. But the whole point about match type is this is a way of refraining and refining to show your ads to very specific searches, not to everybody, to people who do something very specific. So I like the phrase phrase match way of structuring my keyword phrases because it's um, it's going to be presented to anybody who's looking for this, whether they were typing something in the beginning like. Uh, how to choose tax audit representation, or maybe their search, their search query was like um, uh, representation for tax audit, you know, the words juxtaposed. Google will actually sort of, you know, make sure that this is shown with or without other words in front and even sort of juxtaposing the phrase inside there a little bit. So it's sort of like forgiving like that and gives it a little bit more opportunity. If I did something like exact match, where you're putting this, these hard brackets, a left bracket, right bracket around the words, then I'm saying to be much more restrictive and don't show my ads unless this is exactly how it is. I don't want any other words in front or after and I don't want them juxtaposed. You're trying to give some instructions to Google like how to show your things so you can have a little bit more refined control. Now the problem is Google also makes a lot of changes over time. So, you know, they try to be a little bit uh, more restrictive or, or a little bit more forgiving about singular versus plural. And if there's like, you know, the word the in there or a or for, you know, so they may be, uh, you know, swapping things out. But I'm just giving you a word of advice. If you want a better experience for your early campaign, you know nothing how to do this, you're best off, try this phrase match approach. Every phrase, just wrap it in with a double quote on a separate line. You'll set yourself off for a better experience the first time. So I'm clicking save and continue. Now I'm getting to this point where it's saying, okay, let's go and create the ad. So that's great, our progress bar, we're almost done here. Um, we need to create all the stuff that's gonna go in this ad. So we have to have a final URL. Remember I said earlier that a final URL, it's like, you know, if you be driving somebody to your website, you're not sure what that is. Mouse over a little contextual help question mark here and it explains this is what a final URL. Sometimes it used to be called destination URL. But basically it's a page of your website, right? That is going to be about this. So if we were all about tax auto representation, or IRS representation, whatever, make sure it's a page that's about that, not a page about something completely different. And don't send them to your homepage. It's a bad experience. Send them to the page that's specifically about the subject matter. Now I have this headline, so I can go and put up the 30 characters in this headline field here, right? So let me go and start by putting something in here. Maybe I want headline one to say IRS tax auto representation, just setting expectations, um, get expert help right now. So you can see as I've been populating information in this little preview window over here is beginning to show what it would look like on a desktop, what it would look like on a, on a narrower screen on a smartphone. So this is giving me a sense of what is my ad going to look like. And if I spent some time analyzing how other competitors were running their ads, you know, this would give me an idea of like, is mine going to look good amongst others? Um, you know, at minimum, you want to do headline one, headline two, headline three is optional. This thing called display patch is optional. Um, just for essence of time, I'm not going to get into what that is. Um, you definitely want to put something in your description one field here and, you know, ideally something in description two. So basically we're, we're adding two sentences in here that are going to get added to the bottom of the ad. So I had headline one, headline two, description line one, description line two. You see they're all being positioned in there. And now this ad looks good, right? And if I had done some of those ad extensions I mentioned earlier about like call out extensions, site like extensions, there would just be more bits of text that could potentially appear around the ad, phone number, location, etc. Um, if I like what I did and I'm ready to end, then I'm going to click save. And here it is. Congratulations, your campaign's ready. So what were the parameters? I'm targeting a radius around Princeton, New Jersey. I've said I'm willing to spend up to $15 a day. Um, if you remember, I said that I was going to spend a minimum of, or maximum of $5 per click. I created at least one ad already. 
and I can go and get back to my dashboard and see what it is. Now, here's the thing. I, I think it's a good idea to actually create more than one ad within an ad group. So you can see over here, summer search, that was the ad group. I mean, that's the campaign name. It's tax auto representation. That's the ad group I had just created. Within there, there are some keyword phrases that I assigned and I wrapped them in that double quote to make them a phrase match. So this is what I want to trigger my ad. If I want to see what the ads themselves look like, here was the first ad I entered. Um, and there's a review process. Like, so there's an automated review. And if there's anything weird, a human might actually review it. But most of the time it's automated. And within a few minutes or a few hours, things are usually approved. And then the campaign can go live once you put a credit card in it. I like to run more than one ad at a time to learn. So it's like in market research, you have A-B testing, testing you know, creative A versus creative B, let them run at the same time. And then you know, in, a, in a period of time, 30 days, 60 days, it should become obvious which one's better, generating impressions, generating clicks, maybe generating goal completions or conversions at the end. If you wanna come back and add more, so you wanna add a second text ad, yeah, so right here, I went into the ad group, I clicked on ads, I can click this little plus sign to go and create a text ad or right here on the page, it says text ad. I can go ahead and click and start getting into the process and creating another duplicate or a slightly different version of that, right? You don't wanna make the exact same thing. You wanna make something that's a little bit different, but again, on the same theme of like tax auto representation. If I wanna go and create a new ad group for a different subject, maybe it's gonna be estate planning. Um, so, you know, here in my ad groups, I don't wanna be putting keyword phrases and ads for estate planning in something that's tax auto representation because that's totally different, right? So I'm gonna create a new ad group. Click on a little plus sign, create an ad group, but maybe I'm gonna call this estate planning. And then, you know, I can go and put, uh, you know, go through the same process again, put in however many keyword phrases I want, save, go ahead and start writing the ad copy. You know, this is just sort of populating from another example to, to help you get started, but I would change obviously the, the final URL to a respective page on my website about estate planning. I would rewrite the headlines and the descriptions accordingly, click done, click next, and then, you know, get to a point where that thing is now up and running and then maybe add another ad to it. So that's how you get started, right? And then you're gonna, assuming all your ads get approved and start running, or you've entered your credit card, you know, and you're, you start running, you know, you check back every, every day or so just to see, has anything happened? What you're going to look for is like, did I get any impressions? So, you know, were, impressions mean an ad was shown to a human. Initially, because you're new, it might be like you only had like a couple of impressions every day, or maybe you start getting some clicks. So somebody saw your ad and they clicked on it. So they clicked from the ad to your website. So that's a good thing, but it cost you money when as soon as somebody clicked on that. And it would cost you up until whatever that, that bid price is that you would set. And if you decided on a maximum for the day, you know, wouldn't be spending hopefully any more than like the $15 or so. So you need to start getting data back. And that's why I said, don't make your maximum bid, uh, maximum budget for a day something ridiculously low, because then you'll sit here and come back every day and you'll find zero impressions, zero clicks, and you won't be getting any learning and then you'll just say Google Ads sucks <laughs> and you've achieved nothing. So this is the thing, you have to be prepared to spend a little bit of money, you have to start getting some clicks, you have to see if those people are getting to your website. Remember, this is just half the battle, getting somebody to qualified-ish to arrive at your website. If your website looks crappy, if the landing page experience is poor, if it's slow to load, if it doesn't seem well thought out, if there's no good clear call to action, then it's gonna be a bad experience and people will not take the next step of like, you know, reaching out to you to discuss and have a conversation. So that's the important thing to understand. You know, your, your ad campaign is great, but if your website isn't really up to snuff, it's not gonna be working hard for you. So with that said, I know that's a lot to take in, but we're, we're like, 1251 now, so I have to open it up for questions. Um, just a few thoughts for the future. You know, once you sort of get a, you know, there's plenty of resources out there that are free. You can go on YouTube or do a Google search, uh, Google Ads campaign or Google Ads campaign for beginners or whatever. You can certainly t teach yourself a lot of this stuff. It's not rocket science and it's not magical. Um, I just have the benefit of having done this for 14 years. <laughs> so, you know, it's, but you can go and get these answers yourself. You just have to do a little research. Um, and then eventually you can grow that and make it a little bit more, um, you know, um, robust. So the things you learned, how to create a campaign, how to go and uh, create an ad group, choose your targeting, 
create at least two ads in each ad group. So at least you have two ads that are playing against each other. Put a handful of keyword phrases in there, maybe like three, four, or five, if you can come up with them. And then just you, each ad group should just be a completely different topic. So that way you can sort of manage them all individually. Um, you want to go and make sure you put in some of those par parameters that help to go and prevent you from having a campaign that runs out of control. And then, you know, again, pay attention to your website to make sure that, you know, it looks good, that it's going to go and answer people's questions. So with that said, let me answer your questions. Um, if you want a link to the recording, you know, do us a favor before you get off the phone, uh, the webinar today, go to this website, thankyoufeedback.com. It's very simple. Just all you got to do there is just go and answer the questions. It's going to ask, you know, what did you watch and did you, uh, what were your thoughts about it? So that way we get some feedback. So again, thank you, feedback.com. And uh, questions. I'll just quickly look at the chat window because I know a couple were submitted. Thank you, and Roland. Yes, there are questions in the chat. So if you could just answer those, that'll be great. Um, and I do want to mention to everyone that this webinar is being recorded. Um, also, I forgot to mention up front that we do provide counseling. And basically all that means is that you can schedule an appointment one-on-one um, -on -one to meet with Roland and there's pro bono, there's no charge for that. Of course, that would have to be approved by the director. Okay, Roland. Yep, so as uh, Ernie was saying, you know, if you're a mom of Huntington County, go to mosbdc.com and request uh, counseling, click on that link. Or if you're in Somerset, or hunted in, you can go to, to that respective website and click on the request for counseling link. Um, just answer a couple of questions and it can get paired off for the one-on-one -on -one business counseling at no cost with someone like myself. Like I typically do website critiques. So if you have a website and you want some feedback on that or if you've set up a campaign you want to show me, you can do screen share and show me and I can give you my opinion on it. We're not selling anything, we're just here to help. So with questions, um, some of the things I saw here was, uh, let's see, how do you find the URL for the landing page? That's your own, um, Peter, thank you for the question. It's your own website, right? So it's like whatever page of the website that you wanna send your traffic to. So if it's a page about like, you know, constructing prototypes or, or helping with, in, you know, invention help and assistance, if you have a specific page of the website, then that's your landing page, right? So thanks for the question. Um, VA, I'm not sure who that is. Why would you want to disable display network marketing to reduce your cost or is it because that is not as targeted as one would like? Um, what I was saying before was we were trying to go and get our ads to appear at the top of the search results. That's not display network. So the search results are literally this. I had a slide earlier in the deck, but um, tax audit representation. So these ads that say ad appearing at the top of a Google search result, that's where we want to get our ad to appear. And that's why we just turned off display network because that's something different. Um, and because you're not managing it the same as you would be managing keyword phrases. So it's just something, if you want to go learn about it, just go and Google how to use display network. But, you know, professionals typically avoid that initially. We start a campaign doing search specific. And then when you get that good and working well, you can start layering in other targeting types. So thanks for your question. Um, here's a question from Peter. Do we pay less when we target less people? Uh, parentheses, local rather than national. It's about relevancy, right? So if you are a local business, like a landscaper example or the accountant example I was describing, you want to target smaller radius or specific counties or, or a whole state because that's more relevant. It's more likely you're doing business locally like that. Um, obviously, if you could be working remotely across the country with anybody, then fine. You know, run your, your uh, geographic location nationwide. It doesn't matter. Um, but, you know, the, the wider the net you cast, the more impressive. The question becomes, you know, will some of those people be hesitant about wanting to hire you because they're afraid of having, you know, they're in California, you're in New Jersey, they're afraid of a long distance relationship for whatever, you know, you get people who just get strange reasons for things. So you don't know for sure. It's up to you. It's certainly worth testing. Um, I usually start very local with businesses that I work with. Just focus on a local area before expanding the radius or expanding the region. So excellent question, thank you. Um, Randy writes, options for landing pages. I'm sorry, I just don't understand what that means. Maybe you can submit the question again. Uh, Ginger, can you enter a combo of exact match and phrase match? How do you know what each click costs? Okay, so the first part, when I was showing you that example of like I'm typing in each, uh, each keyword phrase, 
on a row by itself. Yes, you could mix and match if you want, but you really need to know what you're doing. You should be more experienced before you decide how to do that. I would say as a brand new beginner who's never done this before, pick one match type and stick to that. Learn how that's performing. Maybe do some research to read about, you know, in Google, in the Google uh, support section, what the differences truly mean. And then you can experiment with adding a different match type. The second part of your question, Ginger, uh, how do you know what each click costs? You really don't. There is a planning tool built into Google Ads that makes a suggestion of what a keyword uh, per, per click cost is, but it's always grossly wrong because until you actually run a campaign in a real world setting based on the parameters you've defined, you really don't get an accurate answer until that happens and until you're generating impressions and you're generating clicks. When you're actually, people are clicking on your ads and money is being spent, then you're gonna be getting data coming back in the dashboard that's gonna tell you that. Uh, and then you'll sort of be figuring out, wow, it seems like a lot or it seems like a little or there's more refined ways of managing that as you get more experience. So uh, thank you for the question. Uh, Mark, would you recommend a small business do SEA or SEO first or do both simultaneously? So SEA being search engine advertising, SEO being search engine optimization, I always recommend do SEO first. If you're building a website, make that foundation as solid as possible because whatever you're doing from SEO to try to optimize individual unique pages for keyword phrases to appear in the organic search results, those landing pages or those pages are actually gonna be great landing pages for your search advertising campaign. So I always say do SEO first, get that working well, then maybe for some specific phrases that you're just having a hard time to get traction on, then maybe run carefully planned search advertising campaign for that. Um, thank you for the question. Carla said, thank you, Roland. Thank you, Carla, I appreciate it. Dina, are there any sources where you can find costs associated with each keyword? Um, like I said just a moment ago, no. You have to run a campaign to really get real, uh, real world data as it pertains to your account. What would be the minimum recommended time period to run a test ad and minimum price recommendation for the ad and keyword phrase? It, it's, it's too difficult to answer that question because it's gonna depend very dramatically on what industry you're in, what type of keyword phrases you're using, how new your campaign is, how competitive that marketplace is. I know that sounds like a, a vague answer, but it's like, it, that's the truth. I really can't even make projections on legitimate things that I'm managing for myself because every tool that I use gives me wide range. You know, if different tools give me, different, give me a lot of different wide ranging thoughts. Um, and then until you actually ran, run the campaign, it's just, you won't really know what's accurate. So you have to just run a campaign to see what's gonna work. And as far as a period of time to test, to have significant results. I mean, obviously a stat, statistician is gonna say, well, we have to have a universal size of this and to be statistically significant, we have to have a plus or minus 5% confidence, blah, blah, blah. The average small business owner is gonna be like, what the hell are you talking about? Give me a number. So if you want a number, say, hey, run it for 30 days, see how it works. <laughs> um, it sort of has to be, a, you know, it's, it's a combination of like, if you only had like 10 impressions and three clicks, that's not gonna be a good result. And if you only had 10 impressions over the course of 30 days, then you're doing something wrong. It's either your bid price is too low or the keyword phrase is too weird and obscure. And you, the things you need to do to sort of try to get more impressions so you can generate more clicks. Uh, let's see, uh, Needham, thank you a lot for good information. Thank you, I appreciate it. Judy, once your budget for the day is met, does that ad shut off? Um, Yes, as I said before, if you said that you wanted to, your budget for the day to be like $15 or $10, in theory, that's when Google's supposed to stop spending money. But Google has a little cap where they say, you know what, we feel like we can still need to go and achieve the results we think you want. We might spend a little bit above that. So it's a, in theory, it used to be like plus or minus 10%. Now they sort of claim that they might spend a little bit more than that if they think it's under, uh, under behalf. Uh, but ideally in a real world, once you've spent $50, $15 for the day, if that's what you've defined, and you've had a number of clicks that add up to about roughly that number, the, all your campaign should shut off for the day and restart tomorrow. So excellent question, thank you. Um, I know we're just about done. Uh, Ravi writes, most people I know use Adblock on Chrome. How effectively advertise to those who use Adblocks via Google Ads? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer to that. It is a difficult world when we're talking about privacy and cookies and right to be forgotten and trying to go and block ads and do things. Uh, I think the truth is there is, a lot of people are not as sophisticated as you be believe and they are not blocking things proactively, but if they installed some new version of a browser that has that turned on by default, then yeah, they're not gonna see certain things. What that's doing is it's not necessarily preventing an ad from 
being shown, what it's doing is preventing data from being reported properly. So that's going to always be a challenge, and it's going to get worse over the next couple of years. So there's no solution, but you know you can sit back and do nothing, or you can sit back and try, test and learn, see what happens. So thank you for the question, Ravi. Uh, Jennifer writes, this class was very helpful. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Mark writes, uh, thank you, Roland. This was very informative. Great. Thank you. Um, so that's the end of the chat questions. I believe I got them all. Um, like we said, if anybody wants the uh, recording in a few days, we'll send it out to everybody. Just visit thankyoufeedback.com, leave some feedback for us, and we'll make sure we get that out to you. Do that today now before you forget. Um, and then, you know, resources available, as we said, you know, Small Business Development Center, we're here to help throughout the state as well as across the country. So, you know, if you know somebody needs help and they're not local, you know, tell them, you know, search for SBDC and they can find an office near them. You can request free one-on-one -on -one business counseling or no-cost business counseling with people like myself and other people who are just here to answer questions. Um, and of course, you know, there are other resources as well, you know, your chamber of commerce, your local library, continually self-educate. I think that's the important thing. Um, any questions, anybody? We're done. Thank you, Judy. Judy wrote great information. I, I just we'll... want to thank everyone for attending. And uh, again, if you have any questions, please give us a call on the main line, which is 732-842-8685. Of course, we're working remotely. Um, and Maggie, do you have anything to add? Or um, No, I was just glad to see a lot of uh, clients I've spoken to on the call today. So I'm, I'm glad and I hope they got a lot out of it. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you taking time today. Please, you know, if you, if you can help a friend out and uh, stay positive, you know, we will get through this. So good luck, everyone. All right. Thanks. Good luck, everyone.